Hey, I'm Gopar, and this is a video on how I style Emacs to make it look more modern. These are just the packages I use. If there's any packages that you're using that you like and you think I should be using, please let me know. But yeah, let's go ahead. This will be a quick overview. So one of the things that I use, oops. Yeah, there we go. One of the things that I use is NeoTree and TreeMax. Well, I should say I use TreeMax. I used to use NeoTree. So both of these are file explorers that pop up and show you the files relevant in your project structure. For example, if I go into, let's say, um, into a Django source code and I pop right in here and I pop up TreeMax, it will pop up on the left side. And yeah, so nice uh, file explorer, pretty simple as that. Now my configuration for that is pretty straightforward. I simply say, hey, I want to install TreeMax and this is the configuration. I bind it to F5 and I have two, two configurations. I'm not going to go over them. This is just what I have. Pretty straightforward. I rarely use this. I use it every now and then when I'm per programming. The next one is Solaire Mode. Solaire Mode allows you to distinguish buffers that are associated to a file and buffers that are not associated with any file. For example, if I do, if I open up ChatGPT, you can see that the background is darker than the files associated with than the buffers associated with files. This is to distinguish right away which buffers are real, quote unquote, and which buffers are fake. I, I like it a lot and I use it. I set it up. Um, for example, it should be a pretty easy setup. Yeah, let's go to Solera mode. What do I have? So yeah, after initial initialization, just put it everywhere. And it looks like I needed to do some things to make it work with TreeMax. But yeah, pretty easy setup, not not too much. The next one on the radar is Golden Ratio. Now, Golden Ratio, I've already been demoing it since the beginning of the video, and you may or may not have noticed, but when I switch buffers, for example, if I go to the right one, you can see that it extends that buffer. And if I go to the left one, it extends that one. Now, that's what Golden Ratio does. It allows you to focus on whichever buffer you're doing, and it shrinks the other buffers that are not as important. So it doesn't completely get rid of them, it just shrinks them so they're not in the way, and you're focused in whatever buffer you're doing. It is pretty amazing and I greatly like it. And if we look at my, con oops. And if we look at my configuration for it, I believe it's also pretty minimal. Use golden ratio, toggle widescreen. Yeah, so there's a mode for uh, for widescreen as well if it seems that it's it, that the gaps are too big. So, oh, it looks like I made a note. It looks like it's no longer actively maintained, but it is what it is. I'm not sure if I had any issues with it. I can't remember. I don't have a list of them here. But anyways, I just say, hey, make sure it's installed. And you know, after initializing, just set it on. And I say don't. And it looks like I don't want it to work with occur mode for whatever reason. OK. That is golden ratio. Pretty straightforward and handy. I will put all the links to all these packages below, by the way. That way, you don't have to Google them or whatever. Next one, I use something called Vertical. Now, Vertical by itself does not make the Emacs look pretty. It's just another framework like I do or Helm. But what I do is I use a third-party package called Vertical PostFrame. Now, PostFrame, what happens is when I do Meta X, I get this beautiful little box in the middle instead of in the mini buffer as how we're all accustomed to when we start using Emacs. This is just something I greatly like, so I added it. It may or may not be what you like, but I like it, so I added it. Simple as that. Pretty straightforward. And if we look at the configuration for vertical, uh, I know this is the messy configuration. Yeah, use vertical post frame. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, even right here, just for looks. So I just say, hey, vertical post frame, and then I have some configurations with it. But yeah, it's pretty simple. All of these are pretty simple to set up. I don't really spend time configuring Emacs a lot of time now since I run an agency now, a dev agency, so I don't really have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. The next one is Doom Mode Line, which is pretty popular and I'm pretty sure most people have heard of it. If not, you should definitely check it out. Doom Mode Line. There we go. So it looks like I have some configurations and I need to, you need to run this command before running it, before installing it. And after that, I have some simple configurations right here. You can re it is highly customizable, so you can go ahead and read the documentation. This is just an overview video again. All right, cool. So what's after that? Well, I installed Doom Themes. Now, Doom Themes is a collection of themes under the Doom uh, namespace. And 
it yeah it's just it's just that it's just a large number of doom themes that you can use you just install it and it works perfectly with doom and doom mode line that's the whole point and this is one of the themes that i'm using i think it's purple uh, let's see what it says yeah doom shades of purple that's what i'm using right now uh, for this video so yeah that's uh it's pretty straightforward to install let's go ahead i keep saying that straightforward all these are straightforward because i don't really like hassle so yeah here it is, I just say configure or for org mode and visual bell config, whatever those do, I don't even remember, because once I set it up and it works, I just leave it alone. Okay, next is Mac specific in init. Uh, I don't think this actually is a stylistic thing, because I think I know what this is, and it's just setting up the key bindings, yep. So right here, I'm just setting up the key bindings to work with uh, with Mac keyboard layout. That's pretty much it. If you ever had issues with Mac and you just Google how to fix it, this is one of the solutions that pop up, the main solution that pretty much makes it work as you expected. Yeah. So padding, yes, this is beautiful. So let me go here and padding, spacious padding, I believe. Yes. So adds padding around windows and frames. So yes. So just install it and then after initialization, just just enable it so what padding does mode is if you look at this window you can see that there's padding on the sides of the windows on the uh, down on the mini buffer the mini buffer you would usually be all the way located at the end of the frame but right here there's a little bit of padding now if we go to the actual self uh, spacious padding yeah some images right here so I will provide the links again but this is spacious mode uh, spacious padding disabled so as you can see you look at the mini buffer right here just everything normal but if we enable it we see that there's some padding which is beautiful so this is what it does I just uh, to me it makes it look aesthetically more pleasing so I enable it yeah next is all the icons so uh, all the icon oh I don't have it ah there we go yeah, all the icons. It just provides pretty looking icons for whenever you need to show them. Uh, I have this set up for Dired and for Tremax, as you guys saw earlier, but you can use it for other things like in completion and things like that. And here's the sample configuration that I do, that I have at least. Next one is the dashboard. So the dashboard is pretty much the little um, screen that I use whenever I start recording any Emacs related video. Uh, Let's see if I can go back. Yeah, there we go. Oops. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So this is the dashboard. You can configure it. I personally, I have it configured so that it also shows me some of my finances. But right now, it doesn't display it because I have a, as you saw, a little function that po pops this up to the fronter, to, to front and center. But it removes that little bit of information because my personal finances are not something I want to be broadcasting to the world. So yeah and finally and not least I have a handy little function uh, called pair, pair programming that will automatically set a lot of things up so if, let's see if I go to Django I always default to using this project but anyways if I call uh, let's let's imagine I'm programming I have this this is how I usually work with just one buffer open and if I do pair programming go par pair programming it sets this up so that TreeMax opens up and also I usually have uh, ChatGPT open and I have like depth docs open as well which show me documentation. So right here, uh, if I'm really head focused or I'm having or I'm working on a project that I've never worked on before or framework or whatever, I usually have something like this. So I have one buffer that's open. I have line numbers uh, enabled for pair programming. So somebody can just tell me, hey, go to line 34. I can ask ChatGPT something. I can look at the documentation of whatever framework I'm working on. And then if someone says, oh, hey, open this file in utilities or whatever, and translation or whatever, and I just open it. And it makes it a lot easier to work with someone. But yeah, I believe that is everything that I need to cover. But yeah, that is it. Let me know what you think. Uh, remember. Knowledge grows when it is shared. Thanks.